Stand-up comedy emulates life. Give me a man who can beat you and beat you hard. Stand up over your prostate beaten body and gloat about it. Walk around and be proud of what he done. And you have to learn how to get up from that kind of a beating, literally and figuratively, and embrace what is and want the reality of that. It's a cold, hard, tough motherfucker out there that takes no prisoners and asks no questions. Winning is everything. Winning is right. Winning is what should be. I was at a show one time, contest, singing contest. I, I, I sing a little bit. I'm your singing, strange singing, bullshit aspirant. Aspirant. And I saw the competitors. And one fellow, tremendous. He had a very good voice. But what the hell do I know? I'm not a professional. I'm not in, I don't know the market. I don't know management. I don't know what sells. And I don't, under, don't realize, I haven't come to grips with the fact that the cream doesn't always rise to the top. The best, quote unquote, don't always get it. <clears throat> and the best is not a fantasy, not wishful thinking, not defined in an in ideal in Alice in Wonderland, the best is the one who won. Decided by the inscrutable, indomitable, unquestionable will of those who have the power to make that decision. The fellow that won that competition. Terrible. Couldn't sing in my opinion. Now what's my opinion worth? It's why what two cents. My opinion is worth two cents on this. I'm an amateur. You need the opinion of someone who has been through the minefields, who knows what it is, who's been through the combat out there and knows what it is, and is willing to get balls to the wall with that kind of reality and give you a tremendous, ruthlessly objective heartless evaluation to literally prosecute the hell out of your performance. And every time you open the door to step out there, it's showtime. It'll either make you or break you, period. No redeeming values. No consolations. I remember my mentor quote unquote he gave me advice I was trying to uh, establish a rapport let's put it that way with some uh, uh, woman and this was in his 70s sexual revolution free love and all that crap which had gone a lot further in words than it did indeed unless you were in the 80-20 parody curve unless you had drugs or whatever the crap Whatever the scene was that made you popular in those days. Dig what I'm saying? And he gave me the advice of what to do. The advice he gave me was very practical. It was predicated on my height. I'm only 5'3". I have a moon face and I have gross features. All these things going against me. So anyway, the advice my mentor gave me took that in consideration. And I tried to do it, of course. I tried to do it cool guy style. With delusions of grandeur. With phony expectations. With phony fantasies of entitlement in Alice in Wonderland. And when I fell through my ass over it, I came back to my mentor and I said, Look, it's Christmas time, coming up New Year, don't you have a consolation for me? I failed, I fell through my ass. 
she no longer no longer represents a piece of ass i fell through my ass on it i made mistakes i was now rejected and my mentor said the world doesn't give a failure a consolation and neither do i and all i'm going to tell you is Jim will be closed tomorrow. Come early if you want to work out. I've got places to go, things to do, and I'm just going to wish you a Merry Christmas, and I'm also going to wish you a Happy New Year, and that's all I'm going to do. Walk around trying to get groovy guys, your tall fancy guys and all this other bullshit. To intervene. To do something for me. To help me. To show me compassion and humanism. Because it's the right thing to do. Because it's altruistic. And then I was told. The biggest mistake you can ever make. Is believe the perfect gentleman the nice guy he will come through in the final analysis forgetting prerogative prerogative it's a tough cold hard realistic motherfucker out there there's no other way to look at it that's why I respect Trump, he's a guy that can kick you right in the teeth, brand you, and make you love it, and make the brand stick, so that you're always seen through the brand. He's caught hold of a cold, hard reality. We see each other, we think of each other, we behave in stereotypes, and caricatures, and mockery in brands because we have so little access to good hard credible facts everything said and done in sound bites quick sound bites and symbols on the fly we talk in shorthand and if there's any truth to be found I'm arguing in the real world, in the real Machiavellian world, tough world, down on the ground, dog down, down on the ground. That's the only reality that counts. That's the only reality that matters. That's the only reality you have to deal with. Now let's get at it.